the varies from practice to practice. Created his continental plan as cheap as like forty nine dollars a year, and it goes all the way up to like ninety nine dollars a year. One of the big problems is is like I've seen people create these like in a spreadsheet in their computer, right? And it's like, uh, it's like okay, I got to collect forty nine dollars from you, and it's like, oh, it's renewing, like, and then everybody doesn't renew on the same date, so now you have to have a full time person who's basically like managing hundreds of people that are renewing at random times. How do you integrate with the PMS, and how do you protect that information? How does that work? One of the the reasons we draw the sort of differentiation between the discount dental plan and the dental subscription, it's sort of a question of loyalty. The idea is you want to serve every different patient persona that comes to your clinic. The offices are getting very creative these days, like all sorts of membership, just like you walk into an Apple store and get an Apple Care for your, your laptop. Welcome back to another episode of Dental Marketing Goat. I'm your host, Gary Bird. I'm the founder of SMC National, where we help you create, convert, and close more new patients so you can grow the way that you want. But you can't grow if you're not retaining your patients and they don't see value in your services. Today, I have the founder and CEO, Suda, of Subscribely, and Joe, the CTO, and they're going to break down how you can actually build on top of patients who don't have insurance as well as patients who have insurance and you can get them back in to your office when you want them and show them how much money they're saving with your in-house plan. Now, you're going to be absolutely blown away by this because it's really cool technology and it integrates with your PMS. So you're going to want to stay tuned for this one. All right, we are live and I'm excited about this episode. So Suda, why don't you tell me what the number one thing is that you're seeing that's helping dental offices grow right now? Putting patient in the center, uh, like giving more options to patient for accepting more treatment um, and then making it more affordable for them. Uh, that's what driving their revenue uh, because one, patient are more aware of the dental, like an you know, oral, oral hygiene and overall health and all of that. So they are showing up to the practice. They're making an effort yep. to taking, taking care of the oral needs, but making it more affordable and then understanding their needs and taking their needs into consideration in giving the treatment back to them is what driving the same sort of growth these days. So like, how do, how does, how do you practically do that? Cause that all sounds really good for me, right? Like I get excited and like, yeah, let's do that. But it, 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 there's like a bazillion things that you could do to do that. So kind of how, break me down how you guys view that and how you help offices with that. Um, so there are a couple of options that's like, you know, which industry is aware of, like one is discount dental plan. Another one is like, you know, dental subscription plan. Um, the difference between those two, I'll get into it right away. Uh, one, like you know, making sure dental care is a routine. Like there are about 100 million people who don't have dental insurance. So those patients typically come into dental practice like once in nine months. Mm. We all know we have to go once in six months for the cleaning. And in certain instances, it's much more than that, right? So making that more affordable, like we help them create like different subscription plan based on the patient persona and the underlying needs. So if you are a healthy, huddled hygiene, like, you know, we'll have to go to the dental practice at once in two months, then we create a, like, you know, huddle plan, which covers the hygiene and the recall and all of that. Then if you are a child, then we create a child plan. And if you are a patient with a PDO, then we create a PDO plan. And the discount dental plan concept is just like a Costco membership where you mm. buy into a plan, which gives like discount on every other procedure. It doesn't come with the inclusions. So that basically gives them a flavor of what membership entitles and how much unlimited discount they can receive. And all of this flavor is what I just discussed. It gives them a very more affordable option for them to get their dental procedures done. And this is like alternate to them going to dental insurance and which is a lot more expensive for them to get. And there is a waiting period and a cap. Hey, got an important announcement for you. We are hosting the second annual Full Arch Advantage event where you learn to create, convert, and close more full arches so your office can grow the way that you want. This is going to be in partnership with BioHorizons. And this is our second year. But the important part is it's going to be virtual. So you don't have to fly out, buy hotels travel with your team, you can just register and block off the days and watch virtually. And right now we have early bird pricing. It's never going to be cheaper than right now. I don't even have a discount code because it's so cheap. It's only $199 right now to register. And it's for your team. It's for your dentists. It's for your treatment coordinators, your dental assistants, and your marketing managers. And you're going to learn a ton of stuff 
to grow. Last year's event had a 74 MPS score, which is amazing. And the feedback was really, really good. So if you're looking at leveling up, we have a ton of new content, a ton of new automations and things that you can add to your practice to really grow and executing on the phones to make sure that you can grow the way that you want. So don't miss this. Go to Full Arch Advantage right now and sign up. This price will not be around for long. Yeah, all that. So so how does that, how does the office um, rebound from that? So like, how does, how does, so if I'm a, if I'm a patient, let's start from the patient side. So if I'm a patient, this, this dental, you called it a discount dental plan, right? Okay. So the discount dental plan, if I'm coming in and I already have dental insurance, can I still get a discount dental plan? So you can get a discount dental plan if you have a dental insurance provided you have met your annual maximum cap. Right? Okay, like so it's new- like and so it's like insurance plus, right? And then so okay, so now I've used up all my insurance, so now I can get this discount dental plan. And then let's just talk real practically. Let's say that I need um, a crown and a filling, and um, it's going to be two thousand bucks, and that's how much it's going to be. How does the discount dental plan help me as the patient? Like, uh, what would I normally pay for that in addition to uh, or on top of my insurance? So it, it varies from practice to practice. Like, you know, there are practices who create a discount dental plan as cheap as like $49 a year. And it goes all the way up to like $99 a year. Yeah. Right? So, or a month. You could charge by the month too if you want to do, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Usually like what we charge by the month is like, you know, when they create plan with the entitlement, when they give like with cleaning, because the plans are usually at that time is about $300 a year. So you want to charge like $25 a month. So it is as good as you paying an insurance, but you get cleaning included as part of your subscription, right? Like, you know, so that's where the discount dental plan and subscription plan comes into play. But if you are a patient with insurance, and if you're getting this as a secondary thing for your out-of-pocket expenses, usually it's a yearly plan what you opt in, and then you pay like, you know, anywhere between $49 all the way to $99. The discounts are uncapped. Like there is no waiting period. Pretty much you can get like, you know, any, anything that's offered will be discounted based on the UCR uh, and what discount that they set up for that. Joe, did you have a comment on that? Yeah. So I, th- I think one of the, the reasons we draw the sort of differentiation between the discount dental plan and the dental subscription, it's sort of a question of loyalty, right? You, you, um, you raised a good example of a, a crown and a filling, right? Someone who's looking for that, they're probably looking to get it done and get it done quickly and cheaply. So they're, you know, they'd gladly pay a hundred dollars to get 20% off of those services. Yeah. But are they likely to come back to that dentist in the future for their cleanings and, and whatnot? Maybe not, right? They're going to, they're, they're looking to take care of an expensive procedure and get a discount. Whereas if they purchase what we all call a comprehensive plan or, or a subscription plan, um, now they're getting their hygiene for free. They're starting to develop that loyalty, that regularity of coming in often because the things that I need for my dental care all year long are included in that subscription. So they keep renewing, they keep coming back to that same office because everything that they need is included in there. Versus if I have to still open my wallet to pay for my cleanings, it's not really building that that loyalty. It's just kind of incentivizing someone to pay quickly to get a discount on an expensive procedure like a crown. Got it. Okay. And then how does an office... I, I don't know who would be better to answer this one, but like, how does the office end up covering the difference on this? So if, is, is my goal as the office and my goal to get everybody to sign up for this in my office? Cause it's going to increase retention. And then how do I, how do I justify the, the discounts and all those kind of things? I mean, the idea is you want to and serve every different patient persona that comes to your clinic. Mm-hmm. Right. And so the, the offices are getting very creative these days. Like they, they create an implant maintenance plan. They create like a night guard, like a subscription. They want to get like a retainer, like membership, like all sorts of membership, just like you walk into an Apple store and get an Apple care for your your laptop. Right. So like the offices basically want to understand what kind of patient persona that I'm looking to attract and what are their primary needs and does the insurance cover this or if if they don't cover what is a complementary plan, what I can create. And for patients who do not have insurance, what are their needs are and how I can go about creating a, a subscription plan that basically satisfies that persona needs, right? So that's how we help them, one, uniquely understand what are the different patients or what they're looking to serve 
and what kind of different packages what they can create so to serve those patient needs. Got it. And then how do I like manage this, Joe? So I know one of the big problems is, is like, I've seen people create these like in a spreadsheet in their computer, right? And it's like, uh, it's like, okay, I got to collect $49 from you. And it's like, oh, it's renewing. Like, and then everybody doesn't renew on the same date. So now you have to have a full-time person who's basically like managing hundreds of people that are renewing at random times and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So like, I'm, I'm sure you guys have like, I haven't seen the back end, but I'm sure you guys have like a robust way to track this. And then how do you integrate with the PMS and how do you protect that information? How does that work? Yeah, great question. So we, we often see exactly what you described, right? That people think, oh, I can run this myself in the PMS and with the spreadsheet. And then, you know, as soon as they get 10 or 15 subscribers, they're, you know, freaking out and they're like, okay, I need software for this. So I would say there's two key things. You know, one is we have uh, really two sort of products, right? One that's sort of more patient facing. Um, so patients can peruse the site, learn about the plans. They can sign up online. Uh, there's also a, a sort of patient facing portal where they can add their dependents if they want to update their contact information and credit card. Um, but the key piece is the in office software. So office staff are using this to sign folks up, right? When they're talking about treatment planning, uh, they can, you know, present the subscription as an, op uh, as an option and sign the patient up right there in the office. Um, they can do things like pause the subscription uh, cancel the renewal, add dependence, all of these sort of things. There's dashboards to kind of see how the subscriptions are selling, right? So that's the sort of in-office software that makes this as easy as possible for the office staff to manage. And then the key thing that we invested in and, and really was a, a foundational element to what we wanted to build in this product is seamlessly integrating into the existing workflow in the office, right? Mm. We didn't want this to be just another standalone piece of software, <laughs> that they have to log into and enter patient information. And when a patient walks in, they're logging in here and they're checking stuff. They're over here and they're checking stuff. So we wanted to seamlessly integrate. So that was foundational to the product was the ability to integrate with the PMS. We integrate with all the major PMSs. Um, and so that how does that work? So to, how does that work? Like yeah. why, why would I log into your guys' stuff to manage things and not have to log into other things? Like how does it work into my workflow? Yeah. So the core of what our product does is really that recurring payment that you that you describe, right? It manages the subscription, it manages the payments and the family members that are together on the subscription, but it's pulling information from the PMS. So you can look up a patient based on their patient ID and it'll pull all of their demographic information into our system. You're not in there typing everything in and asking them for their email address again. It also tracks the utilization of services in the subscription. So this is one of the key components of our offering and why we kind of made that differentiation in the beginning between discount plans and subscriptions, where subscriptions include things in, um, you know, include things for free. If you're going to include things for free, you've got to track that, right? If someone's on a periodontal plan and they've gotten their three periodontal treatments or, you know, maintenance treatments, have they gotten three? Have they gotten four? Do I need to charge them for this one? Is this one still included for free? If that's not being tracked anywhere, that's a real headache, especially if you want to offer patients location mobility. Potentially, you're a, you know, a growing DSO. You have multiple locations that patients can go to. You've got to track to know, hey, did they use the free teeth whitening that they're entitled to in my plan or not? And so by having that PMS integration in place, we're pushing information into the PMS. We can tell the PMS, hey, this person is on a subscription. They're entitled to these discounts. We can pull the utilization of services into our system. So we could track things like, how much has this patient saved over the course of the year? When we send out a renewal email reminder, we can tell that patient, hey, congratulations, you saved $869 this year by being on your subscription. And you Don't can forget automate, to renew and when you can the automate time that. Goes. You automate that yeah. because you're integrated with the PMS. That's really cool. Exactly. Now, how yep. do I, now what if I want to, um, I need to just drive up numbers this month. Like this month sucks. It's September. Everything sucks. Everybody's canceling because everybody's went back to, um, you know, it's just September with school and all that kind of stuff. How, how do you drive that? And like, what, what would be the drivers around that? Something like that, or even do you do something like that? So one, like, you know, we can potentially understand like, you know, what is a patient base, like, or the chart that is open to begin with. Right. And then you can create like custom campaign around that. Then we can also work with a marketing company to understand if this is a geographical location that you're targeting, and these are the like retirees population that's out there, and they are looking for a need such as this. So let's launch that membership plan 
and then offer 20% more discount to retain those patient loyalty into the patient base where they're looking to Also add. for new patients. Yeah, exactly. Have you seen success with that? And let me, before, before we go down that road, I'll just share my experience with this. And I've tested it a lot of different ways from a marketing perspective. When, what I have experienced is when you're offering a campaign for a discount, let me give an example. Let's say that you, you want an oil change, right? Which is the equivalent to a dental cleaning, something that we all know that we need. We need it in a set of fixed amount of time. We're not looking to pay top dollar. Most people are going to lose money on the oil change. Like they're going to lose money on the, on the uh, cleaning plan. So you call, you call the, you know, the, you call the office and you say, Hey, um, I want a cleaning or I want an oil change. And they go, yeah, let me get you into a membership plan that's going to get you X amount of discount on treatment. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You, we haven't even, <laughs> I haven't even brought my car in yet, right? You haven't got to look under the hood. I've seen that fail like over and over and over again. Um, and I'm not saying that that's what you're proposing. I'm just telling you what I've kind of seen fail. What, what have you seen that like kind of works on that side of it? So that's, a, that's an interesting question, right? Like, you know, that's why we actually train the treatment coordinators to actually present the membership plan. Mm. So they are actually not presenting right when the patient is walking into the door. To your point, you haven't look, looked under the hood. <laughs> yeah, Maybe yeah. the patient is not taking care of your mouth and they need a, a like you know root planning and, and they they have a cavity which needs to be taken care. So then the and plan all of a sudden makes major sense, right? So if I if I come in for the $99 oil change, and then I get in and they go, okay, before you pay for your oil change, you got $2,000 worth of work that needs to be done. But if you join this $99 plan, you get 10% off. So you get you get $200 off the $2,000 worth of work you need on your car. Plus, we'll waive the fee for the cleaning because that's included in the package. So you're going to save 300 bucks today. Does that plan make sense? It's like, duh. Like you'd be stupid if you didn't sign up for it. But if you present it to... I've seen... And I've even seen subscription companies like recommend this, like presenting it really early in the patient journey where it doesn't make as much sense. So I was, I was really curious how you broke that down. I think you said that really well. Yeah. I mean, like to add to what Joe said is like, you know, because we are within the PMS, this membership column literally appears as part of the treatment plan to begin with, right? Like, and also when you're presenting a treatment plan with the UCR column and then with the membership column. And then you would actually see what's a cash price is, what's a membership pr price is. So it, it makes no brainer for them to sign up right then and there. And because they're using a software like us where we are compliant and we can even accept HSA card to sign up for the membership, that's an even more additional value. They're using a pre-tax dollar money to pay for this. And then they're able to like you know sign up for the entire year worth of treatment so they don't have to look beyond that. Got it. Awesome. Any closing thoughts for us, Joe, to some things to keep in mind, especially around like security and whatnot? Yeah, I think that's one of the things that, you know, we take really seriously. Um, in, in my prior life, I worked at a, a health tech uh, that dealt with oncology data, so cancer patient data. So I really learned how important patient data is and, you know, security around that. Um, so we're, for a, a startup, sort of as early as we are in our, in our lifespan, um, we're actually going for our, our SOC 2 type 2 audit. Uh, which I think is pretty rare for us, uh, a software company our size. I, I actually saw on LinkedIn the other day, someone was congratulating uh, one of the PMS uh, vendors for being the first to get their SOC 2 certification. Um, so they're, they're not even there yet. And we're, we're going for that now. Um, one, because of how important it is. And two, I think when you start early, it's actually easier to keep it going as you grow. Because yeah, it gets more complex. Right? A big company... Yeah get scared of SOC 2 because it becomes this Herculean effort <laughs> to like get 90,000 teams to all coordinate and follow, you know, policies that were never put in place. So, you know, there's software now too that can help and make it easier. So, you know, we've invested in some of that. Um, so that's one of the things that I'm, I'm really proud of. And I think it's going to help us as we grow and, and make it easier to, to keep it going. That's awesome. Um, Sudo, how, do, how does, if someone wants to learn more and see if this is the right fit for them, how do they reach out to you? They can go to subscribely.com and book a demo and um, and they can get one of us to actually demo a product. Um, so Say that website one more time for me. Subscribely.com. Subscribely. Spell it. Spell it for me. S-U-B-S-C-R-I-B-I-L-I.com. And then there is a book a demo button. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Gary.